Hi, I'm Dory Smith, and I'd like to introduce you to the ARBA's 51st breed of rabbit, the Czech Frosty. This is Alvin. He's my first helper today, and we're going to just give you some of the basics. A very brief history. They were developed in the Czech Republic in the um, 1930s. They were first described by a college professor who was looking to breed uh, meat and fur rabbit. They were later accepted, redeveloped and accepted as the Czech Republic's national breed and that club started in 1987. They were first imported to the U.S in 2013 by ARBA Judge Don Havlicek, who fostered a lot of interest in the breed here. And um, I eventually took up the second COD and got them passed just this past year in 2022 in Reno. Um, they are a four class breed, ideal weight is seven pounds. Main difference that you will notice on the Czech Frosty, and you can kind of pick that up as Alvin is moving around here, is that they have a completely different body type. And because of their different body type and their different fur structure, the ARBA Standards Committee proposed to the Board of Directors, and it was accepted to add two completely new definitions to the ARBA standard perfection to use in describing not only the Czech Frosty but upcoming European breeds. And Alvin is um, demonstrating that so nicely. He has a nice straight top line and very parallel sides. We call this upright. It is an upright cylindrical breed of rabbit. So there are cylindrical like the Himalayan in that they have parallel side lines. If you can observe this, his shoulders have the same width as his hindquarters, but he is not stretched out flat like a Himalayan. He's going to pose upright with his feet under him. That's a nice pose right there. And there will be no rise to his top line. He's going to start right below the ears, and when posed correctly, that is going to be either straight and flat or slope downward towards the hindquarters. Come here, Alvin. It takes a little patience with these guys to pose them, especially if they haven't been handled a lot. But they're posed almost like a fuzzy lop or a Netherland dwarf. We're gonna give them just a little lift in the front end to display that nice top line. Nice pose, Melvin. You can see that they are predominantly white rabbit with brown eyes, but they have a little frosting, a little tip on the tip of the fur. I'll try and show you a close up later. You can see a little more coloring on the ears and the tail, sometimes around the nose, but it should be distributed fairly evenly throughout the rabbit. We don't have a standard on how much color they should have, how dark it should be, more that it should be apparent that they have the frosty veil, that guard hair tipping, and that it should be even. There's no strong preference for a real dark veil on the rabbit. I like a nice medium color like he is, he displays nice definition of those guard hair tips without being too dark. A senior is going to have more coloring than a junior. Juniors may often appear nearly white, 
but they should have at least some color development starting. I'm going to get out uh, a doe now, and we'll take a look at her. Another thing you're going to notice about the Frosty is their ears. They should have an open ear, not a closed folded ear. It's upright and makes a V shape. They're not tightly together and folded. So they're open, slightly apart. They have a really broad cartilage base, which gives them that V. And they should be rounded at the tips. Pointed ears are a severe fault. And you can see they're very heavily furred. That's another um, strong attribute of this breed, is the ears. And they have a very nice rounded face, as you can see. We just love their chunky little faces. Right, Alvin. All right, I'm gonna get a doe out to look at now. Thank you, Alvin. This is Payline. Her fur is a little um, less finished than Alvin's. It's a little more um, uneven in color, so she would be faulted for that. But she does have a really nice type. I like this rabbit a lot. She is she's a little brick house. I like a lot of width coming down to a nice full loin and hind quarter. You should not catch on the hips. A nice full. Come here, hon. See if we'll cooperate here on the closing. That's pretty nice. She's a very pretty little doe. I like her type a lot. Her color is, like I said, a little off because she is. Kind of between coats here. She's a young senior doe. She's got very nice ears. You'll see the doe has a little um, less head development than the buck, and that's very typical. They should have still some roundness to that head and nice breed character, but they're not quite as massive as the buck's head. another view of her. Again, top line, fairly smooth, coming down into the hind quarter, no rise here. You should not see a rise like we do on a compact or a commercial rabbit. They don't have to be extremely high. We don't want them stretched way up high, but I do want to see that front legs fairly straight. I want to see a little bit of daylight here. I think they look their best that way. Okay, I'm going to get a junior out. This is a little junior doe. Haven't named her yet, but she's pretty darn cute. She has got a lot of color coming in. You can see her fur is still kind of fluffy and standing up. That's going to change quite a bit as she develops. I've just had her out to play with a few times here. But she's showing me everything I want to see in a, in a young junior like this. She's three months old. I've got nice shoulders. So I'm getting those parallel side lines. Her top line when she sits up is very nice. She's got a really cute head and nice ears. You'll see in Europe sometimes they actually will uh, lift them up by their ears a little bit. I don't see that becoming a thing in the US. Um, I think it's going to be more appropriate to lift them like this 
that's what we're used to doing and seems to work well for my rabbit but she's a real cute little junior I'm going to bring her closer so you can see the color developing on her fur if we can She's got a lot of color development for a rabbit her age. I'm gonna pull out a couple younger ones here. So you can see the difference. Here, do you guys wanna come out and play? This is a um, kit that's probably about 10 weeks old. It's still in the developing stage. But you can see it's very white. There's very little color development yet. But that's going to come. Um, that's very typical in this breed. Sometimes they have a lot of color at this age, but it's more typical that they're nearly white. I can barely see a little color starting on him. But you can see they've got the dark eyes. There's a little tiny bit of color on the ears, but they're pretty much a white rabbit at this stage. So we let them grow. I'm just at my first call. I'm looking for, you know, is it a pretty well filled body? Do I have some width in the shoulders? Is there some head development? Are the ears shaped correctly? And I'm going to look at width between the hind legs are they really pinched or narrow set check the teeth a lot of times these really um, bulldog type head rabbits have some teeth problems and i do see that crop up so we call that really early so this guy's just in with his siblings growing up right now I'm going to get Alvin back out so we can look at his fur. I hope you can see it. I am in my barn. I'm going to take my phone here. Okay, this is Alvin's fur. And this was the other change that Arba had to make to account for the European type fur. They're describing this under the broad category of normal fur as a slow rollback. It will slowly return to normal. It's very, very dense and plush. And you can see the black tipping here. Come here, Alvin. If I can open that coat up a little bit. I think he has a very pretty color. It's very even. When you push it that way, you can really see the dark tipping. The tipping color is described as dark sepia. And the eyes are brown, although in this light I'm getting some reflection that makes them look kind of grayish, but they are brown. You can see the darker color on the ears. You can see how thick they are. They've got a lot of cartilage here at the base. And their nails are dark, they have pigment to them. Mismatched or white toenails are DQ. And 
Well, there we go. There's Alvin, and he's saying thank you. If you'd like more information, go to your uh, ARBA website, arba.net, and there is the standard published now for the Check Frosty. You can also go to checkfrosty.com, which is the club's website, and we have a Facebook page, Check Frosty Rabbit Club. You're welcome to join that, and we hope to see you at the shows. Thank you.